Hey folks, how you doing tonight? Welcome to Cooking with Charles. I'm your host, Charles Minnick. And guess what? We're gonna cook. Get my oil heating over here. Give me one second and then I'll be right with you folks. Tonight, we're gonna have steak and we're gonna wrap this around a center of prosciutto. Nice Italian dish. And as always, we like to imbibe while we cook. So tonight we have an Italian Sangiovese, Il Bastardo. As the label says, it's rich, fat, and luscious. Now I'm not rich and I'm not fast, but I am luscious, so I think it's a good pairing for the host anyway tonight. So first off, wet the whistle, get the, heat, get the oil, nice all, about two tablespoons of olive oil heating over here. And what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna take an inexpensive cut of one and broil like this. We're going to slice it very thin. We're gonna wrap it with the prosciutto and then we're going to skewer it just like this. Let's get a close up down here so we can see. See that? And what we're gonna do, I've already done some, up, done some up ahead of time. We're just going to pan sear these puppies right over here. These will take a few minutes. And we don't wanna crowd our pan too much. So we're just gonna do a few at a time. But what do we do first with the London broil that we have? Well, what you do, get your London broil, trim off some of the excess fat, which I've already done for most of it. And we're just gonna trim off a little bit more. Now, an easy way to cut this piece of meat, folks, is let it thaw out about three quarters of the way. It makes the cutting much, much, much simpler. You're less apt to cut yourself and you are going to get a better cut going down. Those were done when it was frozen, they're in the pan, or three quarters of the way thawed, I should say. And this is just a little, little difficult to cut. Although I am a professional, so I will have to just make do and soldier on. Now, what do we do? Well, we're gonna lay these strips right out like this. And when you guys came in, I was giving things a little bit of pepper, and that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna give these a little bit of pepper, and you know what? We might as well give these over here a little bit of pepper love too. Should also think about flipping these. Mm. Now guys, we're not just gonna fry these over here, or as I say, pan sear. That's a fancy way of saying you're frying it in olive oil. But we are gonna sear the ends, and we're gonna make a nice sauce later as well. Let those sit. So, back over to our beef. We got these strips. This one looks like it'd be a little thick. So, but we take our prosciutto, just like that, and we're going to roll it. Now, if you cut your beef and it's thicker on one end and skinner on the other end, start rolling so the skinny end is in the middle. So the thicker end is on the outside. That way it'll cook a little bit easier. And the great thing about this recipe, folks, is you can take a cheap cut of meat, like a chuck lemon broil, and you cut it nice and thin, and you pan sear it. It's make it very tender. It's gonna have a lot of flavor to it as well. Now, if you notice, I didn't salt the beef at all. I didn't salt the beef because we are rolling it with prosciutto. Prosciutto is salty. All prosciutto is is cured ham. It's a wonderful, wonderful luncheon meat, so to speak. Yes, I would make sandwiches out of this or add it to sandwiches, give it a little depth of flavor. If you can buy this on sale, stock up, put it in your freezer. Fresh is always better, as I already talked with uh, Andrew here at the station before the show, but when you get it on sale, guess what? Frozen prosciutto, thawed out, is better than no prosciutto at all. Plus, you always have it on hand, and if you look how thin this is, this will thaw out mm, in seconds. 
And the best thing is, you got some leftovers, makes a great snack. All right, so going back over here, folks. These are coming along nicely. Going to move things around over there. Going to put the rest right in here. Oh, look, more prosciutto. Mm. There's just something about ham, which is awesome. Whether it be regular ham, salted ham, honey ham, prosciutto ham, rosemary cotta ham. God love the pig. Oh. Got a hotter side to my pan on the back side here. So I'm gonna move these newer pieces I just put in down here. And I'm running about a medium heat. I'm gonna put it up to about a medium high now. Mmm, very little that you need to do with this dish. Um, as I said, we're gonna make a Marcella wine sauce with this. So we use some Marcella wine later, a little bit of beef stock. Uh, we're using a canned low sodium beef stock because there is a lot of salt in that prosciutto. Again, that's why they did not salt it to tenderize it. The salt in the, what we're making it with and the salt in the prosciutto and the fact that we're cutting it very thin is gonna be nice and tender. Um, so that's what we make. What you can also do at home is, once this is like halfway done cooking, put some marinara sauce on it, let that simmer uh, for about 20 minutes and you've got yourself a nice spaghetti sauce. So I'm gonna pepper it a little bit more. And let's see how these are going. Yep. All right, some of these are just about done. So I'm gonna place these over here. And yes, folks, we're gonna take the toothpicks out. That's just to hold things together for a while. Oh, and folks, by the way, this recipe tonight is dedicated to one of my fans who contacted me, Ed Valade. This one is for you. I uh, had the pleasure of running into your son, Johnny, last weekend, and he told me what a fan you are. So, Ed, this is for you. And uh, tell your son to watch the show so he can make this for you. Or better yet, you make it for him. But, Ed, thank you for watching. And folks, end of the show, you'll see my email address, cookingwithcharles at gmail.com. By all means, shoot me an email. Let me know what you like and dislike. I love hearing from you. All right, folks, look at this. We're going to deglaze the pan now. That is a fancy way of saying we're going to get all these brown stuff off the bottom of the pan. There we go. We've got about, about a cup of beef stock. Um, every little can like this is about two cups. We're going to use about half of that. You can take the other half, you can save it. Uh, one thing you can do is put that in the freezer in an ice cube tray and then you have a little bit of beef stock anytime you want it. Thaws out very, very easily and quickly. And we're going to add about half a cup of Marcella wine. Turn this up to high. And we're going to reduce that by about half. Uh, Marcella wine, folks, again, if you saw one of my old shows, my past shows, you can buy this like this. This is like cooking Marcella wine. You can also buy a more expensive Marcella wine, which is a nice alternative for drinking if you like that. Personally, I think Marcella is hobo wine. Ooh, it's love to cook with it, but nothing I want to drink out of a glass. All right, folks, listen, while this is reducing, we're going to take a quick break, have a word from our sponsors, and when we come back, we're going to uh, make a little vegetable salad.
All right, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Charles Minnick, host of GTV Smash Hit, Cooking with Charles. I've teamed up with the Goffstown Network to tell you about their outreach and food pantry programs. The mission of the Goffstown Network is to provide for the hunger-related needs of our neighbors in Goffstown and their surrounding communities. Founded with the governing principles that no person should go hungry and every person deserves our care. The Goffstown Network serves the area by providing food and other services on an emergency short-term basis. This spirit of community and mutual caring is extended to anyone in Goffstown, Dunbarton, and New Boston. Normal hours of operation are Wednesday evenings, 6 to 8 p.m., and Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. to noon. Now, you can, you can also assist them through donations of time, food, or money. Like the help they give, the help they receive is also greatly appreciated. You can reach them by calling the number on your screen or by stopping by the Parish House of St. Matthew's Church. It's located in downtown Goffstown at 7 North Mass Street, right across from Sully's. We could not do this show without the help of our friends at Sully's Superette. Since 1987, Sully's has provided the area with the best meats around. Here at Cooking with Charles, we not only count on them for their kind donations of meat, but John and the gang at Sully's also provide us with the best produce, deli items, and libations that make Cooking with Charles the huge success it is. From all of us at Cooking with Charles, thank you. Mm. All right. Oh, ho, ho, look at these puppies. Guys, they're looking great over here. What I've done is while you guys were gone, I was busy working for you. That's right, working for you in the kitchen, slaving over a hot stove. What I've done is I've braised these a little bit. That's why I cooked them about half to three quarters. Then I put them back in here and I cooked them the rest of the way. We're reducing this by about half. We still have a little ways to go. So I'm going to take these back out because we got a little more preparation to do for these bad boys. And oh, they're bad in a good way. Like that girlfriend you can never had because she loved the bad boy. She would have loved these. All right. Oh. All right, so what are we going to serve these with? Well, while that sauce is working, let's get some tomatoes going, folks. Let me show you a little something here. Actually, let me uh, give this a little wipe. What I'm going to do, guys, is I have a little bit of spray down here that you cannot see. It's uh, just sanitizing spray because, as I tell you, behind me, this glorious kitchen is not there. It's actually a green wall, which brings me to another point. If anybody out there wants to donate a great kitchen set, by all means, give me a call, shoot me an email. I will promote you throughout the show for a beautiful kitchen set. <laughs> so, here we go. We got nice vine ripened tomatoes. I'm gonna take the core piece out. And we're gonna do that for all of them. Oop, got a little bit of a tag still on those. Now guys, about tomatoes, let me show you a little trick, folks. Let's get the camera right in here. You don't want to be eating that. Okay, that's where the stem goes in the tomato. You can either get a tomato core, which you can, it's like a melon baller, but for tomatoes. You can take that up. If you don't have one, just cut to the side of it. V it out. Shazam, it's gone. You just learned a chicken trick. Ch <laughs> kitchen trick, chicken trick. All right, we're gonna slice these up. Now, you can slice these up however you want. You can do circles, you can do these half circles like we're doing, because right now, it's going to be about the plate presentation. Because if you're cooking this for your loved one, which I know you will because, well, that's pretty much what we cook, guys. All right. We have no starch with this meal. Because this is just going to be a nice, light oh, summer meal. Folks, I paused just now because we have a torrential downpour here. One of the first ones of the, the spring season. All right, this is what we got going on. 
We're going to have our tomatoes right there. With those tomatoes, we have pickled cabbage, guys. This is actually Aunt Ellie's, Aunt Annie's great, great product, I gotta tell ya. It's a sweet and sour pickled cabbage. Look at that. Now, we're not done yet, folks. You're probably asking why I have so many tomatoes cut. Well, we get Andrew, who by the way is an English gentleman. He works at the station. The second we went on break, he had to tell me that there is great Marcella out there. So you know what? Next show, we'll have some great sipping Marcella, hopefully. Not this. This is disgusting to drink. But he says there's drinkable Marcella out there. We will find out, and I'll get back to you. All right, we, we also have for you folks for this dish is I have some Danish blue cheese that we're going to sprinkle just a little bit right here, for, just for color, and of course, for a lot of flavor. Now, okay, let's go back to our sauce. That has reduced nicely. We're going to whisk in about a teaspoon of flour. And it's lumping up a little bit, but we'll take care of that. And when I say whisk in, should have brought a whisk, left that at home. And there we go. You can also use cornstarch, mix it with water. And there we go. Get a little bit of Parmesan cheese. About a tablespoon of that. Again, should have brought my whisk in, but the fork's gonna suffice. In the battlefield of the kitchen, we adapt and we overcome, folks. There we go, we're gonna turn that down. Actually, we're just gonna turn that off. That's gonna stay plenty hot. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to take off and take out these toothpicks. Because they hurt. <laughs> you don't wanna be chewing them. You don't wanna be mm, serving your guests toothpicks. Wow. Mmm, 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 mmm. Folks, I rock at this. <coughs> this is good stuff. All right. Almost done here. Do, do, do. All right. And now, in the front. We're just going to take those. We have got our sauce. Just need a little bit right over these bad boys. Oof. Look at that. Now, folks, remember what I said earlier in the show? You could let these simmer with the tomato sauce for about 20 minutes as well. A great bolognese on steroids, so to speak. So what do you say? Take a look at that, folks, huh? Is that not beautiful or what? But you know what's gonna tell? Ooh. The taste will tell. As you can see, I don't have a steak knife, but I have one of these. Wow, that is incredible, guys. You make this, you have a great dinner or a great dinner party. Mmm, I need more. I can't help myself.
Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Folks, as always, thank you for watching. I gotta toast myself for this one. This is wonderful. Easy, easy to prepare, as you can tell. If I can do it, you can do it. As always, guys, if you want to see a certain recipe, let me know. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, let me know. My email address is cookingwithcharles at gmail.com. It'll also be shown at the end of the show. You can also see this episode and all my past episodes on my YouTube channel. That's right, folks. I'm all over the airwaves. Um, my channel is called Cooking with Charles M. So check it out. In the meantime, try this at home. And when you're cooking with Charles, you're cooking with good looking. Have a great week, everybody. I need more. That is awesome.